A very good morning from the Isle of Col. Today's video is all about how I got here. I was in Oban this weekend, gateway to the Scottish Isles due to its perfect location on the west coast of Scotland. Oban is the Calmax super hub, serving 11 destinations on all shapes and sizes of ferry. To see the one I'd be sailing on tomorrow, I headed way up to McCaig's Tower, which has always looked to me like a giant zoetrope. It was an early start the next day and I'd camped down at the beach the night before, but it was so worth it. As well as ferries, Oban is full of boat trips for anything from around £12 to £100 or more. My argument is that a CalMac day return is pound for pound the best boat trip possible. For £18, I'd be getting castles, lighthouses, stunning scenery, two hours on a beautiful remote island, and even a pod of dolphins thrown in for good measure. And I'd still be back in Oban in time for lunch. So yes, an early start, but what a day. <laughs> Once on board, I headed straight up and outside to watch our departure from the harbour. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's up to the Kimberley Blues Ferry. We have the Calmine Ferry to the Trail of Hope and we're the plan for the Sailing to call when I was today. One of the advantages of a 7am departure on a Sunday was how quiet it was on the Clansman this morning. Our route today will take us out past Carrera and Lismore, up the Sound of Mull, and then out into the Atlantic Ocean and my destination of Col. This ferry will then go on to Col's neighbouring island Tyree, turn around and hopefully pick me up on the way back. I'll keep quiet now and let you enjoy the Carol Arms and the stunning departure from Oban. This is one of the bigger CalMac ferries, and while public space is limited to only a couple of decks, it's still more than comfortable for a sub three hour crossing. There are lots of different areas on board, so you can be guaranteed to find some peace and quiet if that's what you're after, and always have easy access to the outside areas. As you can see here, the seats are big and comfy with plenty of legroom to stretch out and relax. The dogs seem pretty happy too. Things are of course a bit restricted at the moment, but the cafe was still open and serving snacks and homemade soup, although finding a seat in here might be a bit of a challenge on busier crossings. Next to the baggage area, these wee desks were really handy to charge the camera batteries and connect to the surprisingly good free onboard Wi-Fi. A 
Upstairs on deck 5 there was a nice lounge with great views out over the front of the ship. If the weather hadn't been as good, this is where I'd have spent my morning for sure. As we pushed out into the ocean, it wasn't long before Call came into view. That hook, by the way, that's to hold the gangway for disembarking. It was a big, slow turn into port. I'm always amazed how expertly the crew manoeuvre these massive ships. Welcome to Call. As I say, I've only got a couple of hours here, but I'll snoop around and do my best to let you see some of the island. It was of course pretty quiet, but I really liked the feel of the place. Like I always say, I need to come back sometime and spend some proper time here. I walked as far as time allowed but didn't quite make it to the beaches on the west coast. I had to turn around or risk missing the only ferry today back to the mainland.
I settled down for a quick bite to eat on the ferry back and a view out of the window I'll never forget. After that stunning performance, we retraced our route back to Oban with views up to the Small Isles. As I disembark, I want to take this opportunity to say thanks so much for watching today. If you're new to my channel, please consider a subscribe to make sure you don't miss future videos. And let me know what you think of CalMac in the comments below. Thanks again, see you soon.